of the happy hour at Faces. Hello to all those enjoying the happy hour. Wacky Trillo has invited both of us, partner. I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. And he said that uh, he would invite the two of us to go there at the proper time, you know. Well, why don't we oblige him? <laughs> <laughs> a foul there against Ramon Fernandez, who's back in the ball game. He has 19 points in the ball game right now. Make that 20. They're still down by five. 90 to 85. Scoring tapered off in the third quarter, partner, compared to the way it was uh, played in the first half. Juan Fernandez continues to blow hot. Uh, he's already got 21 points to his credit. Uh, and Pandwai is now down by just four points. Bernie Fabiosa is back to his orchestra leader's chores. Juanles works it over to Philip Cesar. Oh, good move by Philip. That was certainly a mismatch. Philip against Freddy Hubalde. He has the height advantage. And he took good use of it. So back to a seven-point marker for the coffee makers, uh, looking for their fifth game, or rather fifth win in six games. He says Sierra with a short shot. There's going to be a foul call against Carpio, warding off against Romolo Mamaril. Carpio is not very happy about the call. He better not be too demonstrative about it. <laughs> yes, uh, referees are uh, mean business in this ball game, especially in the referee Ledesma taking. Uh, everything as it comes oh well, they've really asserted their authority in this all filipino conference good too partner that they do it it's a very healthy sign for the league radio balde with a back pass to mon fernandez they can't seem to find a breach in the great pace defenses forced to an outside shot and here's arnie partners two-man game actually there between hobalde and fernandez but an outside shot had to develop bernie gets it over to philip Philip versus Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> Problems for Freddy. Philip throws up a very high shot and Mamaril controls the defensive boards. Ovalde well, keeps it alive for Tanduay. Here comes Willie Henrolao. Oh, in and out. Another fast break in the wing making here for great pace. Quadless goes to Allen. How could he have missed at that range? Philip is there and he's down on the floor. Must have got a finger in the eye by uh, Romulo Mamarel. That's his second or knockdown for this ball game, Dr. J. That's right. His first knockdown occurred right in the first quarter. But this looks a little bit more serious in the first instance. So we're in the middle of a 30-second injury timeout. Let's watch that again in slow-mo. Ooh. <laughs> That was a hard knock on the eye with the open palm by Willie Hanavalao. I'm sure he intended no mayhem there, but it doesn't lessen the pain or the agony one bit. Yes. And Turin Valenzona sends in De La Cruz for Willie Hanavalao. All right, Philip Cesar is getting the ice pack. So the 30-second injury timeout has expired. It's now a charge timeout to great take. Continues to hang thick over the battlefield. This is Philip Cesar, the offended party. Nice to see that he's fine, but I can see a nick over his left eye. That's a souvenir left uh, on his face by Willie Henrolao's fingers. Well, it didn't impair his vision nor his shooting accuracy one bit. So it's an eight point lead for Great Pace, 94 to 86 with 10 and a half to go in this basketball game. Tandwai struggling to keep his head above water in the all Filipino qualifying pace. This is a very important match for them, partner, because they only have two games after this, no? That's true. And their last two games against Formula Shell and Ginebra San Miguel, who has a one-game advantage going to this ball game against them. Ginebra still going up against Magnolia later tonight. Well, it's imperative that they win this ball game tonight uh, if they are to console their fans who have been very, very disappointed with their showing so far. Yes, at this point, Tanduay cannot afford to count on the losses of other teams. They must think of winning their own games. Exactly. That's the best way to look at it. Bottom line. <laughs> Juan Fernandez against Philip Cesar. So what else is new? Here's one. Having some problems with their offensive game. They don't have too many patterns. It's clearly a one-sided game and a three-point shot by Alan Kaidik adds to their woes. The shooting streak of the year's most celebrated rookie continues and gives great pace the double-digit advantage on you. 97 to 86. Another turnover. And, you know, and when you're trying to come back from a deficit, deficit partner, you tend to give up a lot of bad passes. Try to go at it, you know. You bet. Okay, let's watch Arnie Twadles against Mon Fernandez. Can't get over to Philip. 
He's amply covered, so he goes outside to Bernie Pogliosa. Bernie tries a penetration, loses the handle, and here is a fast break in the works. Onchi de la Cruz has got to challenge Joey Carpio. Onchi de la Cruz did not see action in the third quarter. Turing Valenzona gave William Herrlau the chance, but they really need the point production of de la Cruz, you know. Plus his muscle. That's true. And the mismatch that he has over Fabiosa, actually. Well, this might tip the hand of Baby Talupa. And uh, if Onchi goes on a scoring spree again. In the meantime, watch Mon Fernandez go to Onchi. Good oh. pass. Oh, but Mamaril, too fancy with his uh, driving towards the basket. Good thing for Tanduay. There was the foul on Carpio. That's right. You know, Roland Mamaril has acquired so much confidence uh, that he is now uh, coming up with some fancy moves, uh, some of which backfire on him. That's right, partner. He's got long fingers and he can really hold the ball with one hand, but the control is not like a Dr. J or, you know. Oh, wow. Well, or, or James Worthy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're talking top of the line. <laughs> Those are Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Freddy Ovaldi against Arnie Twadless. Can't shake off the shadow of Arnie Twadless. But this is well cuts loose. This is his shot. This is one that he should make. But uh, there is Mamaril again with that one-handed shot. The follow-up one more time for good luck. Okay. The human beat ball redeems himself. But Andoy is still down by seven. 97-90, 8.29 remaining in the ball game. Arnie Twadless. Good block by Fernandez. Really timing his uh, block against Arnie Tuadles. One on one by Freddy Ubalde. Yes, sir. Okay. Tandua is stringing together. Six, six, points. Of six points. Chopping down a great pace advantage to just five markers with eight minutes to go. Plenty of basketball ahead of us. Alan Kaidik. Oh. Well, there, Padim could not help it because he had his back turned towards the big ball. Nobody really shouted for him that there would be a backdoor play by. Uh, Bernard Fabiosa. Well, they try to drop defense on Freddy Ovalde, but they knock the ball out of bounds. We've got a timeout. He tends at this moment because they're about to the white fans, you know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Their club is down by seven points. Juan Fernandez figures to make it five. Nope. Still no soap. And here comes a fast break in the making for great taste. Philip Cesar struggling to control the letter. Goes to Arnie Twadler's. And Joey Carpio is nudged out of bounds by Freddy Hubalde, who will have to accept the fact that he has just picked up his fourth personal. Good thing for him, he didn't play in the first half because he had picked up four personal fouls here in the uh, second half alone. That's true. Well, right now, they only have two team fouls against four for great taste. Seven and a half to go in the ball game. Freddy Fabiosa wants everybody to spread out. At low post, Philip Cesar. That's the fifth personal foul of uh, Freddy Hubalde. And Philip really is taking advantage of his height advantage. He's been scoring in the second half against Freddy Hubalde. He knows the height advantage, the post position play that he can really do very well. He's going to work against Freddy. Freddy is picking up those fouls faster than the ref can call them. <laughs> and the fact that he's talking, keeps talking to one of them, <laughs> might put him in. Uh, Bigger danger. Ito Isquera is promptly sent in to replace Freddy. Eight point lead again for the great ace coffee makers who have controlled the ball game ever since the start of the second quarter. And look at this. We still have 723 to go in the ball game, and already great pace has gone past the benchmark of 100 points. They had 66 of the halftime, partner. That's true. Has to be one of their most prolific games in the All Filipino so far. Philip Cesar is on Mon Fernandez. Oh, he pulled out the escape but it was a forced shot indeed. Alan Kaidik galloping down court, going to Joey Carpio. He's got great, great fluid working for him. Yes, a lot of good teamwork on the part of Great Case. The confidence exuded by all of its members on the court. Padim should hit this shot. He finally does. You called it, Dr. J. That's his angle, that's his range. 103 to 94. Walter Noy is still trying to keep that uh, deficit to a manageable level. It's down to nine points, six minutes and 30 to go. Baseline drive, Alan. Oh, good anticipation there by Onchi De La Cruz. Weak side help, defense, and a good move by De La Cruz against Arnie Tuadles. Everybody's been pulling that act right lately. That's apart. right, and you did point out that <laughs> it was Philip Cesar who popularized that move. And I That's a new word that you just invented, partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, Philip, talk of the devil, has <laughs> just picked up his fourth personal. We'll be back. You know, the specter of a fifth defeat against only one victory stares the rum makers right in the face and threatens their chances of seeing further action in this old Filipino. 
All right, but in Israel misses. Hey, that was a lucky bounce, good, but will it count? Yes, there was a foul called against, let's see who. Saidik, number eight. And the shot is going to count for Ito Isguera. He has a chance for a three-point play. Really mad at this uh, incident because how can somebody foul when he's in front of you and the guy was following up from behind? And that's the point that Baby Lalupan is trying to drive across, not only to technical committee member Narciso Bernardo, but also to deputy commissioner Rudy Salud right across the court. Yes. Call was made, the three-point shot for uh, Ito Isguera, a six-point lead for Great Taste. We're at the exact halfway point of the fourth and final quarter. Alan Kaidek trying to shake off Ito Isguera and drawing the foul from Itoi. Yes, admits the foul. That will be the uh, 15 foul called. 14 foul called against Tanduai compared to six for the Great Taste Coffee Makers. Third personal foul of Itoi. We're shade under the halfway point of the fourth quarter. 551 to be exact. 103 to 97. Still a six-point lead for Great Taste. Good pass inside by Philip to Joy. Yes, Philip Cesar ever the good quarterback, finding the uh, open man inside the gutter, and that was Carpio cutting in. I like the way you put that, Andrew Jay. The gutter. <laughs> oh, oh, behind the back pass, Onchi de la Cruz. Fernandez does that very well, partner. Well, it takes two to tango. <laughs> yes, and I'm, a I'm good sure cut. He, yes, Carpio, he misses. Arnie Tuanles keeps it alive for the coffee makers. Okay, Carpio says one more time around the block. Let's clean up this act. Fellas, Alan Kaidik, the money man. Tuanles, he goes to the bank. Well, two guys picked Alan Kaidik. That was Fernandez and both Ito Isguera going to him. So nobody picking up Arnie Tuanles. He scores from 18. Again, the coffee makers dows in cold water on the rally aspirations of Tanduai. And we have a held ball or a foul? A loose ball foul called, I think, on Carpio maybe. Fourth yes. personal for Joy. He's been playing a good game for and solid game for the Great Taste Coffee Makers. 17 fouls now against Great Taste compared to four for Tanduai. Four minutes and 51 seconds left in the ball game. Well, that's a silver lining in an otherwise bleak horizon for the run makers. The fact that Great Taste is in penalty. But on Alan Kaidik just picked up his fourth personal. And so they start cashing in on the penalty situation of great taste these are the dividends right now That's coming right. <laughs> passing out the dividends and it is getting is the first recipient he uh, has been playing a very steady game he has 14 points in the ball game right now joe you're right you know this guy may be a rugged performer on the floor but outside of it he is one of the nicest guys you can ever hope to meet that's right he really improved with the Atanduai Ram makers. Turing Balenzana giving him his opportunity to play. He's got 15 in the ball game right now. And the great taste lead is down to a very shaky six points. 449 in the balance for this ball game. In four minutes 46, both of the teams already over the century mark, Joe. That's true. Oh, nobody switching off against Fabiosa. He had a layup, but he missed it. Mamaril asserting his height underneath. And here comes Onchi de la Cruz on the opposite side of the floor. Fernandez, Fernandez keeps it alive, goes right back to Onchi. Yeah, Ochi. big play there by Fernandez. Huh? He kept the ball alive. De La Cruz got the basket and the foul. 107 to 103. Let's watch that scintillating piece of action again in slow ball. Fernandez there with the offensive rebound. Knows he was going out of bounds. Finds De La Cruz, the foul by Carpio, or uh, is it uh, Tuadles? Oh, it's Carpio. And uh, De La Cruz completes the three-point play. They're knocking on the door again, partner. Down by just three markers, which can be wiped out, actually, with a single three-point shot. But first, they have to prevent Great Taste from scoring That's on this right. offensive thrust. That's right. The most important thing is to play defense and strong defense right now. No fouls. Get the guy to throw up a bad shot. At low post, Philip Cesar trying to cope with a very sticky defense of Padim Israel. We have a foul called on De La Cruz, pushing off against Bernard Fabiosa. It was a foul away from the ball. And that's the 15th foul for Tanduay. And take a look at the individual foul treble. We find a whole wagon load of them. <laughs> We've got a timeout. Remember that Great Taste is already in penalty. Tanduay has two more fouls to give. We've got four minutes and ten left in the game clock. Noni Robles back in the ball game for Bernard Fabiosa. Inside pass again. And last touch called against Carpio. 
That was intended as a backdoor play. Well, Carpio was doing that against Mamaril earlier in this quarter, partner, but this time Mamaril was right there. Okay. The ball hitting the hands of Carpio before going out. Mamaril had his number this time. Yes, they anticipated the play. Fernandez against Philip Cesar. Nobody cutting in, so Fernandez cannot find anybody to pass to. Ito is shot by Itoy. Yes. You were looking for this play, partner, because you were saying that it could be wiped out by a three-point shot, and Itoy gives it to them. That's his second birdie tonight, and he pulls off the third deadlock of the ball game at 107. 335 to go. Alan Kaidik. Great pace, hard press. Twadless. Yes, sir. Yeah. Fernandez should have played closer to Arnie Twadless. He came in. Arnie had all the time to set up for the shot and back to a two-point lead for great pace. And the run makers want to play this one out very methodically. They want a sure basket off this offensive thrust. And Fadim Israel in the three-point region goes to Ites Garrett, trailed by Alan Kaidik. He makes his move. He puts it out from the side. Safety tap by Philip Cesar. Goes to Arnie Twadless. He is in open court now. Right down the middle. Arnie yes. Twadless with back-to-back -back baskets gives great taste a four-point lead. Goes to coast performance by Arnie Twadless. Swift retaliation by Ito Esquera. Who it, issued that great pass? It was Onchi de la Cruz. There is a perfect example of a time when you have no time to cheer, partner. Because you score the basket, you're all clapping, and you forget <laughs> that somebody's down there for an easy layup. Yes. There is no timeout after a conversion. 111 to 109. Two point lead for great pace. 2.40 to go in the ball game. Noni Robles. That's a tough basket. Yes, he fired over the head of Ramon Fernandez. Yes, and it's a very crucial one, the one that he had to make. So the pressure was there. And here is Ramon against Philip Cesar. Ramon trying to fish for the foul from Philip. Oh, misses a point blank range, but he did get fouled by Carpio from behind. They are in penalty. Mon will take two from the 15 foot line. That was a very smart move by Mon Fernandez. He just continually backed off on Philip Cesar, came close to the goal, and then got himself a foul in the re loose ball situation. Watch it again in slow mo. Look at him. Pushing his butt up on Philip Cesar three times, and now he's the one who finds himself on the 15 foot line. You know, this is a big substitution that Turin Valenzona just made. He sent in. Uh, Freddy Hobalde for Ito Isguera, who had just converted five straight points, a three-point shot and a layup. And, you know, at a crucial time like that, who do you want to go to, a veteran or a guy already on the court who's hot? That's a dilemma for a coach, but I guess the answer there is very apparent. <laughs> well, you know, that's the problem that uh, Padim was saying at halftime. You know, when you're losing, you come up with a lot of gambles now, you know, instead of just feeling so relaxed, you know, with the guys on the, on the, on the floor. Well, Fatim also mentioned during that interview that they were out of sync. It looks like they're finally finding their sync. The score word reads 1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Alan Gaidik missing at point blank range. Likewise, Arnie thought this. And Fatim comes down with a rebound. Okay, this is bottom line basketball. We're into the twilight zone. The last two minutes. Uh, Radio Baldi dances inside and misses miserably. He doesn't deliver, partner. Pass break in the works for great taste. Alan Kaidik. It would have been a three-point play for Alan Kaidik. He did not make the shot, the foul from De La Cruz. The score has been frozen at 1-1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. Here comes Alan Kaidik in slow-mo. Monchi De La Cruz really took his to this ground. He was hoping for a charging foul. But Alan has the chance to give Great Taste back the lead. Time down to a minute and 36. Willie Henrolao is promptly dispatched by Turing mm -hmm. Valenzona to give Onchi de la Cruz a breather. Well, you can see the, uh, the what they call this, the strategy of Valenzona. He will lose with his first. He will lose if he has to lose this ball game with his first five. You know, although they, de la Cruz and Ito Esguerra have been key factors in this mm -hmm. ball game, he will lose with Freddy Hubalde and Henrolao if it's necessary. Well... That's also giving respect where respect is due. That's right. They are seniors. Seniority is the name of the game, partner. <laughs> and that's a thing that's held sacred and sacrosanct in the NBA. <laughs> okay, Alan Kaidik comes through. It's a two-point lead for great days. We have a timeout. Bernie Fabiosa, Arnie Twadles, Joey Carpio, Alan Kaidik, and Philip Cesar for great taste. Willie Harolao, that was him who just inbounded. Mon Fernandez and the rest of the gang for Tandwire, Padim Israel, Freddy Hubaldi, and Romulo Mamaril. But oh, Israel's he misses a layup, oh, yes. A hard breaker of a makeup there, or a layup there by Padim Israel. And great pace, protecting a two-point lead. Alan uncorks a three-point shot at that, you know. So what a big basket that was missed by Padim Israel. Comes back Kaidik with a three-point play, and they're on top by five, partner. 
Things are looking very gloomy in the horizon for Tanduay. They're down by five indeed with only a minute and seven to go in this basketball game, which they need to win so desperately. There's still a lot of time, partner. With that basket of Fernandez, the lead has been cut down to three. A minute left in the ball game. Anything can still happen. Another thriller here at the Ultra. Aperitif of a double header. Ginevra taking on Magnolia in the main event tonight. I did try to make it two in a row in vain. Here comes a fast break. Tanduay doesn't want to waste any time. And a good tapal, the one that you were looking for the whole night, partner. The tapal Volcasil by Philip Cesar. 116 to 113, 36 sticks to go. Carpio goes to Bernie Fabiosa, and now they have the luxury of chewing up that clock bit by bit. 10 seconds in their shot clock, 25 in the game clock, a differential of 15 seconds. Kaidik left wide open, missing it, babying it a little bit, but Tanduay needs a three-point shot or a three-point play. 16 seconds to go. There's going to be another timeout here, probably. And now, Balenzona <laughs> has to send back in uh, Isquera for Mamaril. It is Isquera checking in for Romulo Mamaril. There's a grim countenance. Uh, there's another. And right now, with 13 seconds, Tanduay is desperate for a three-point shot or a three-point play. And to think that Philip pulled that up against a fellow veteran like That's himself, right. huh? Yes, but timing was perfect in that play. So they're going for the screens, hopefully for a three-point shot or three-point play. There's Alan Kaitik, almost an interception. Well, the clock moved down one second. So, Tanduay only has 12 ticks to come up with a three-point play. A lot of time, really. This time, it's easier to set up from this side court row in than it is. There, Fernandez has to move closer. Goes to Willen and Rolau for the three-point shot. Five seconds to go. Freddy Hubaldi. He goes to Ido Isquera. The three-point shot is up. It's out. And it's zero hour for the ball game. Tanduay sinks to its fifth loss in six games now they will be sitting on pins and needles hoping that magnolia also loses its outing against he never san miguel in the main game tonight we